All right, boys, uh, this is part three of uh, Linebacker Reads. And today's day again is July 12, 2011. Let's take a look at this, see if there's some things that uh, reinforce some of the ideas and concepts that we had mentioned before. Here we go. Part three. This, as the title indicates, follows it, is working with two parts of the triangle. We told you before that really the triangle, if you're this linebacker, who in this case is a 30 linebacker, this is number one in your triangle of reads. This is number two, and this is number three. And if we go back and connect all these, it does make a triangle-like appearance. So if we look only at the first part of the triangle, we may or may not have the first part of the reads correctly identified. Um, this is a, the explanation or an attempt to ask you to look at not just the first part of the triangle, but the second part of the triangle. And again, we said there's three parts of the triangle. Number one, there's a number two part of the triangle, and there's a number three part of the triangle. If the number one part of the triangle tells you to do something, or is, is you know, one of the reads we mentioned earlier, and the number two part of the triangle confirms that, then it's over, then it's done. You don't need to worry about anything else. It's, it's, it's the correct response when you're doing the right thing. But if the number one read conflicts or is contrary to what you see with the number two read, then you've got to go to number three. Or as we said in a little... You know, wait a minute, before you go to number three to be free, if you're uncertain what to do, you've got to go to your third read. But if the first read coincides with the second read, then it's game, set, match, it's over, you're good to go. So let's see what that means. Looking at this particular diagram, you can see this is the down block from the linebacker, from the guard. You're this linebacker, this is a down block. He's moving towards the football. That's a down block. If this is your first read, that indicates a downhill movement by you. And the second read is this guy right here, and he's coming towards you. Well, then this is confirmed. Your first and second reads confirm that you should be blowing up the gap and coming downhill this way. And again, the reason why this is the correct response and, and why the correct response is filling the B gap, B gap aggressively is because your first read tells you to fill it, and your second read tells, tells you to fill it. It's over. It's done. That's where you belong. This is a get down the hill, dominate the gap response that's required from you as a 30 linebacker. And again, in this case, both reads agree that you should come downhill, so that's exactly what you do. That's the, and this is also called an ISO scheme. ISO means isolation. This is a play that's popular with two back offenses, an isolation play, where they're going to attempt to block everybody in the line of scrimmage except you, the play side linebacker. And this fullback's been told to get, get up in your grill and get a piece of you to give the, the back a chance to cut either way based upon your response to it. But it's an ISO block. So if we say they're running ISO, we see a team that's running ISO, which is short for isolation, then this would be the correct response if you're on the play side. Let's look at another read for the 30 linebacker. In this case, looking at two uh, reads. Looking at not just the first read, but the second read. So this is a sweep or stretch scheme. Sweep is a play, of course, with the quarterback wheels and he pitches the ball to the, the tailback here. If it's a stretch scheme, he doesn't reverse out, but now he just runs it back here. This is what you see Peyton Manning doing all the time, where the ball goes hard to the edge. He runs it back, hands it to the running back who's working towards the sideline. So this is a sweep or stretch scheme. If you look at the number one key in this case, this is a down block by the guard. Well, this indicates that you're probably going to come downhill. But as you look at the down block, then to the near back, he's going away. See, these are in conflict, and this is what we mean by conflict. This block indicates to come downhill. But your second read says don't go downhill, it means get outside. And so again, as we said, if your first and second reads conflict, then you've got to go to your third read. And your third read is the next guy can block you, which is this tackle right here. And these two are probably going to be working in some kind of combination on the down lineman who's over here. So this is a, your, this is a down block, this is fast flow, and then you see the down block here. This indicates the sweep or the stretch scheme, particularly if you see the ball pitched to the tailback that you should then be over the top and you're having fast flow to the outside. You want to keep a, a, an inside. It says inside. I think actually what we'd say is outside leverage. You want to be over here pursuing the football. Slightly inside or slightly outside can be debatable. You know, you also have a linebacker over here who's kind of our control linebacker. He's the bear of the joker. But your response is the flow with the football in this case and not run through here. If you run through here and go like that, the ball will be gone. So you can go to where it's headed, which is to the outside. Again, this slide is a good indication of what we mean by conflicting reads. These reads conflict down block and lateral flow. 
And when that happens, you've got to go to your third read, which indicates we've got action going on over here, flow to the outside. Your job is to get over the top and be part of the pursuit of the ball. Here's a second um, slide now which shows the down block. This is a down block, which could indicate to you that it's a, uh, an ISO play, as we showed a moment ago, or dive play, or event, any number of things. But the linebacker who's situated over this side should see the pull. This is not a pull, actually, but they, we call it trap. This lineman is trapping. And so when this linebacker yells trap, 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 then it's your job to get downhill, anticipating that the ball's come back inside here somewhere, and you want to try to blow up whatever open window you see. You're coming downhill. This, this makes it an aggressive downhill read. So your first read is down block. This says, hey, maybe I'm going downhill. You see the back go away, which might cause you to pause. But when you hear the word trap yell, trap, 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 then that means you're coming. Now all bets are off. You're coming downhill. So your triangle, again, is the guard to the near back to this tackle. That's your triangle. But when you get a trap call from this linebacker over here, when he yells trap, that means you've got to get downhill because that's, that's where you belong. Here's what we call a power G scheme. This, this is something we see a lot of in our league. You know, you're the linebacker, and you're the third linebacker, you're reading the guard. The guard down blocks. This indicates you may come downhill. But as you put your eyes into the backfield, as your eyes go from the guard to your second part of the key right here, he's going laterally. This should cause you to throttle down. And then when you go to the third part of the triangle and you see that double team going on again, then you want to beat that double team, and you want to try to fight through towards the ball. This is power G. This is a play you're going to see a lot of this year. Power G is where the, the backside guard pulls, and he's going to try to pull around for this U, in this case U, the play side linebacker. The fullback does what we call a J block. Got a little hook to it. It looks almost like a J if he does it properly. It really bellies it out in that way. And the J block is a kick out the outside contain, who is the, the linebacker, in this case our bear or joker, whoever might be on that side. So he kicks out. The guard leads through. They combo this, these two here. It's a double team working up to the backside backer. So these two here, these two players, the tight end and the tackle, are attempting to take this tackle on that linebacker. Those two are blocking this box right here. But again, as, as we talk about preparation week to week and we say they run to power G or we anticipate a power G, the power G means this guard, this is where we get the G in this, he's come to the play side where they're playing power football over here with the double team to the backside linebacker. J blocked by the uh, fullback. And the ball carrier, again, indicated by the closed circle here, this is the tailback who's now trying to run this alley through here. This is where the ball's going, and that's where we want to be. So that, again, is a power G scheme, as you see right here, power G. Uh, here's another situation in which we see a down block. So here's a down block by the, your number one key, indicating possibly ISO or dive coming back this way. But then as your eyes go to the backfield and you see the fullback go away, this indicates some kind of fast flow, something happening on this side of the football, and that's where you want to pursue from. <coughs> um, if one and two don't convince you that it's flow to the outside, particularly if you see the ball pitch, then it, it's gone. You know that the ball's out of the box, it's going this way, so you need to be over the top, taking inside leverage on the ball. And, and if you're still confused and you saw the three come out to block you at this angle, the third part of your triangle, that indicates again that we want to get over the top and it should be somewhere over here. So this is a fast flow to the outside with a zone blocking scheme. You see everybody's kind of bucket step. This is called a bucket step where they go to the outside. Let's look quickly at the 10 linebacker reads. If you're a 10 linebacker and you get a down block and the back comes towards you again, that's downhill. This is the first part of your triangle, second part of your triangle, third part of your triangle. And as we said, this everything here indicates get downhill. Uh, here's a base block. He's coming out to block you. The back's coming towards you. Again, you get downhill. Maintain your A gap. Your second part of the triangle is coming at you. Here you see a pull. And as you see the pull and you see this number two read here also expanding, when he expands, you expand. You expand meaning you go laterally, working downhill to try to contain the ball, which is, again, fast flow to the outside. <coughs> here you see a trap scheme, and it's a trap because he's pulling this way across the football. And as he pulls, you yell trap, 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 trap. That tells this linebacker to get downhill. You fit into the backside A gap. And we anticipate the ball being run inside the box on this kind of thing like this. Now, it could also be the power G, but you can see that it's a little different without a lead fullback. So this comes understanding the plays, and this is a trap scheme. And a trap scheme is identified to take this tackle, who hopefully for us will never do this, come upfield, and he's easy pickings and easily kicked out. So that's a trap scheme that you see right here, trap. 
A zone read, this is your 10 linebacker. Your, your first key, whether we ask you to key the guard or the tackle, they're expanding, your near back's expanding, then you have to expand also. And this expanding action tells you you're gonna, you're gonna begin to slide outside, uh, trying to keep a lever on the ball. Scoop scheme. See, the scoop is, is not a trap. He, he's trying to get underneath and take over this nose. It's called an overtake block. And this bucket step by him, while this guard with the center rips up to level two, is a scoop scheme. And as we told you before, scoop scheme on your side of the ball, on this side of the ball, indicates that the ball is in all probability going to this side over here somewhere. So the scoop scheme, scheme is really a backside scheme. That backside scheme tells us you're a backside A player. As this linebacker begins to fill play side, here's the bear of the joker who's going to be forcing it uh, from the outside in. You know, fit into the backside A gap and stay inside the ball. Here's a double team. This is a common situation where the nose gets a double team. See, these two players, this guard and this center, the guard is the first part of your triangle, correct? Here's the other linebacker. They want to block, the, they want these two guys here to block these two right here. So it's what we call a combination or double team block. Two guys blocking two. They're, these two want to block these two. And our response initially when you get a down blocking course is to come up fill, upfield or downhill as we say. But if, as you look at the running back, if the running back is expanding, and this is key for us to expand also, and this could be the beginning of a, a power G coming back this way. It could be the start of a stretch or a zone play. Uh, there's a couple things that might happen. But if your first key, this is, again, this is conflicting. So I'm going I'm to put a little, uh, kind of call it an exclamation mark like that. This indicates it's one to look at because you've got conflicting reads. You have a down block and then you have expansion. So this indicates coming downhill. This indicates to get wide. If the first key doesn't agree with the second key, and in this case your second key says expand, and that's what you do. You can see the response indicated here. It's expansion, moving away from the football. Here's a high hat, you drop your sign pass responsibility, which again might be a man or maybe a zone. We'll talk about that. And that really concludes then the reads, the two reads, a double read, shall we say, for the, uh, uh, the, the 30 and the 10 linebackers in the defense. Thanks for your attention.